mastering the art of reading people, a critical element and probably the most confused in the modern world is the subject of introverts and extroverts. Now you might wonder, how do I know this? Well, the term introvert and extrovert was basically coined and made popular. And in some ways, he's the founder of the word introvert and extrovert. Theoretically, they, if you research it, they say maybe the term had been used before, but nobody really used the term before Carl Jung. Cool thing is Carl Jung didn't die until 1957 or, 19, or the late 1950s. So believe it or not, and I'll get my team to put a link, there's two good videos on YouTube of interviews in the 1950s, black and white, of Carl Jung. It's not a great interview person, but I fall asleep listening to those sometimes. One's like 30 minutes and one's three hours. Now, more importantly than that, I keep a book on my phone about introversion and extroversion. It is right here. It's called, it's, oops, another personality book. It's called Personality Types by C.G. Young, Carl Gustav Jung. And I've been reading this book. Apparently nobody reads it. And so, they, look, my mentor, Dr. David Buss, talks about introversion and extroversion. So I'll give you a couple perspectives because this is a critical thing in reading people. And almost everybody does wrong. So modern theory and kind of, you know, Dr. Buss's simple shortcut is if you want to know who's an extrovert versus introvert, who's loud, who's quiet. That's kind of the modern version. That's accurate. There's a modern version I'm going to get to in a second, which is, I think is false. But a valid, you know, Dr. David Buss is one of the most revered evolutionary and person in what they call uh, you know, there, there's a technical word for reading people, which we won't get into, but he has a PhD in the science of actually psych. It's called psychometric. So his definition is loud versus quiet, or that's at least a simple litmus test you can use. Now, when it comes to Carl Jung, who I feel like is the founder, so we might as well read what he said, he had a totally different take on introvert and extroversion. And in many ways, he didn't, he kind of spoke poorly of introverts versus extroverts. Now, we'll get to that in a second. Remember I told you there's a true version of the modern version of introvert, extrovert, that's like quiet versus loud. There's also what I believe a false one. And that is this concept that I hear, I don't know who started this myth, but people go, oh, Ty, I'm an introvert. When I'm out in a crowd, I need to recharge my batteries by being alone. And newsflash, I'm an extrovert, and I feel that way too. Newsflash, that is not the distinctive personality trait of an introvert versus an extrovert. That is the distinctive trait of a homo sapien, a human. All of us, all humans, have evolved to need quiet time. Some more than others, that may be valid. But... I don't like that definition because I don't think it helps you. Everybody's that way. Now, the other thing I want to throw in, I'm throwing multiple things at you, so you might want to listen to this video more than once because this is a tricky subject. This is not, this is an advanced subject here. And it's controversial. Different people, some scientists will disagree with what I'm teaching you now, but I'm giving you the source material. I'll put that link. Go go read Carl Jung. He, in came, he invented the word introvert, extrovert as we know it. So he should get, it's like saying, oh no, I'm not going to listen to E equals MC squared from Albert Einstein. Well, he came up with the formula. Now, sure, the formula can be tweaked over time, but don't invalidate the person who came up with it. Maybe the theory is it. But the definition of E equals MC squared, energy equals mass times the constant squared. We're going to listen to Einstein on that in my book. So what Carl Jung did not say you need to recharge your batteries or an introvert versus an extrovert. He didn't say that. Just someone made that up. Okay. Now, so number two, um, what I believe is a touchy subject, but important for me to say, much of what people are calling introversion is social anxiety. There's a different scales of personality developed by different 
psychologists over time. Carl Jung came up with the Jungian kind of 16 personalities, which is not the most valid test, by the way. The 12 types that you will, you went through is in many ways more helpful. But 16 personalities, some people call it Myers-Briggs, some people call it Jungian test. You know, it doesn't cover all of the real aspects of introversion versus extroversion. For example, if you're anxious, okay, there's a hexaco score and it's called extroversion scale. It's the E, it's the X in hexaco. And it's divided into four facets. I won't go through all of them, but one of them is social self-esteem and social boldness and other ones liveliness. But let's talk about social self-esteem. A lot of what people are say, calling, labeling themselves an introvert, it actually, they could just have lower social self-esteem or lower social boldness, which is correlated with anxiety. If your anxiety, you know, or neurosis, they used to call it, is kind of associated with small things affect you. So if you think about it, like publicly speaking, which a lot of humans say is the scariest thing they could have to do, that's a small thing. If you have high anxiety, you'll be freaked out to speak on stage. Now, there's some evolutionary theories on why we don't like public speaking, but at its core, this is anxiety. And so I think a lot of what's been labeled introversion in the modern world is a mislabeling of social anxiety. And the reason I think that labeling is so dangerous is introversion, extroversion is kind of a fixed thing. Six brothers. I can tell you which ones have always been introverted and they'll probably always be introverted. But something like social anxiety can be overcome just like a phobia can be overcome. For example, somebody afraid of snakes, they do exposure therapy. They surround them with snakes for 10 hours, you know, and then eventually the person has no phobia anymore. And in the same way, if you're afraid of public speaking, if you go speak in front of a crowd enough times, not everybody, but many people's social anxiety or speech, public speaking anxiety will drop. So I think when you start labeling people introvert, you're locking them in for life. And I think that's very dangerous. So it's better to say, or for you to admit about yourself, maybe I just have social anxiety and it's something I can work on. Now, as I promised, the old school methodology of understanding introversion versus extroversion. An extrovert perceives the world through objects, okay? And the introvert through the subject, meaning themselves. So Jung kind of said that one simple way I say this is me talking to you, do you learn this way? This video, this audio you're listening to, are you learning? Be honest with yourself. In the last 10 years of your life, do you learn well by interacting, by talking, by brainstorming? If so, Jung would probably call you an extrovert. If, on the other hand, you learn by just going on your own, in your room, quietly thinking through everything, you're probably more of an introvert. You're using the subject you. Now, as I said, Jung kind of said it in a negative way. If you read Jung, it, it was almost as if he wanted everybody to be an extrovert. He didn't see the world as it's being taught now, which is about half the world is introvert and about half the world is extrovert. He kind of saw it as a negative thing. Like, now I don't know that maybe, well, I know for a fact that's kind of been, it's been thrown aside by modern scientists, but I think it's an interesting take. And, and one thing I would take from it, it is logical that people who can't learn from outward objects, Okay, they're slow to adapt and change and they lose. So to me, when I read this young old way of describing introvert, extrovert, to me it's almost like he's describing somebody adaptable versus stubborn. So like I said, these are we're just talking about words here, so people get too sensitive and go, Oh no, that's not what it meant. Like, nobody knows. It's just words. So I'm trying to take a lesson from it. I think the lesson is when you're reading yourself and others, don't just notice if they're quiet or if they're loud. Don't just notice if they are somebody who has social anxiety or has high social self-esteem and boldness. 
more so notice, is this the person that I can talk to? I can give a book. I can take to a conference and they actually learn and adapt because that is healthy extroversion versus a person who only likes their own ideas about everything. Now, once again, this is, I'm really kind of stretching your mind and the term introvert extrovert. But again, these are just, this is a constantly evolving field. I'm somebody who interacts with literally 5% of the world has watched my videos. So I sometimes people say, Ty, are you a psychologist? I'm like, no. But I'm a person who reaches more people than any psychologist in human history. Does that make me a psychologist? No. But it makes me an extremely observer of the human psyche and human behavior on a level where a lot of the great and famous living psychologists interact with me and talk to me. And they, so I'm not saying I'm right on this, but I'm saying I'm qualified to speak on this subject as somebody who literally interacts on a person, you know, I've spoken to a crowd not too long ago, 35,000 people in a stadium or or sorry, 25,000 I've spoken to large crowds. I go live and 30,000, 50,000 people watch me when I go live. I'm interacting with people. I'm also studying under some of the smarter living psychologist. So I'm not trying to put myself forward as omnipotent. Nobody's omnipotent in this subject, right? Don't dismiss what I'm saying. Begin to think through people as people who learn from others and people who won't. This is a big deal when you're alone. You're an entrepreneur who you hire. You are going to dating, love, romance, who you marry, children, family, friends, if you really think about reading people, the huge differentiator is who can adapt and who can't. So adaptive and non-adaptive people is a new way to begin to think about reading people. Make sure you keep adaptable, flexible people in your life because this world is changing fast. Make sure you observe in yourself where you're too stubborn. You only learn from the subject yourself versus the objects, the outer I will end by saying one of my favorite quotes. It's by a professor Megason in the 1960s who was summarizing Charles Darwin and said, it is not the smartest or the strongest who survive, the most adaptable to the environment in which they find themselves. So read people, who's adaptable and who's not. Leave a comment below. On a 1 to 100 scale, how would you self-assess yourself, not by your current feelings, but by the last 10 years of your life, have you caught new trends? Have you been adaptable to the world? I was talking to one of my family members and I was thinking, I lived in a house in Hollywood. It sold in 2001 for 200 grand. I was too young to buy it. And I was thinking, how old were you doing that you didn't buy this house? It now sold for like 27 million. One of the houses on that same block, I'm going, were you paying attention to the world or were you stubborn or fearful? and not adapting. So leave a comment. What are you? Be honest. One to a hundred scale. hundred means you're the most adaptable person, catching new trends, learning continually. One means you're the most stubborn person. Hopefully you're not a one and nobody's really a hundred, but what are you and why? Is it genetic? Is it bad habits? All right. Talk to you soon.